11th Hour partners in from all over the world, all over the United States and all over the world. It's just an awesome time to have you here. All you that are in the uh, uh, cult that are not our partners, that are just tuning in to slam us and all, if you'll be real quiet, you'll probably learn something today. Amen. Now, the fight of the ages is upon us. We have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. This is April the 8th, 2024. What's been planned since 2020 is about to be attempted. Now, I, I want us to, um, yeah, I want us to read Revelation chapter 9. And we're going to look at verses 1. We may read all the way through 11, but I want you to see this. It says, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star from fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him, this star, this angel, was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locust upon the earth. Hmm. And unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when it striketh a man. And in those days shall man seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locust were like unto horses, prepared unto battle. And on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon. But in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. It's like I said, the fight of the ages is upon us. We've come to the kingdom for such a time as this. In 2015, an attempt was made to open that bottomless pit that we just read about. The opening to the bottomless pit of Revelation chapter 9 is not how people think it is. It is an opening into another dimension, so to speak. It has to do with dark matter, black holes, and the like. This cannot be done without a religious rituals and the authority of men. Now, we get more of a clue to some of this in Daniel 7, 25, and 26. This is how it reads. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of times, three and a half years. But the judgment shall sit and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it until the end. Now, did you see that? Notice he thinks. This is a strategy. This is a plan. The Apostle Paul speaks of the wiles of the devil. The serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. He thinks the enemy strategizes. Now, I want you to notice this. He said, but the judgment shall sit. He's after those three and a half years, but the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. So there's something going to stop him before he can get it done. 
Now, I want you to notice this. He thinks. He strategizes. Now, the Scripture also declares that Satan is bound to what's common to every man. Notice this word common. There are only a few things common to every man. Air, blood, life, death, seed, plant, and harvest. This is all common to every man. But there's something else that's common to every man. It's called technology. Technology is common to the whole race of men. The enemy thinks. The scripture declares that Lucifer sealed up the sum, which when you start studying that out, it means that he was a scientist. He understood what made the the tides roll in and the tides go out. He understands gravitational pulls. He understands all of these things. And his throne was on the earth before man was created. Technology is common to every man. Lucifer knew what made all these things work. The enemy understands science more than he does anything else. Lucifer knew what made the tides roll in and out. Psalm 139.15, David said he was curiously wrought, talking about himself, talking about man. He said man was curiously wrought in God's underground workshop. This is the place where God cast his image in the earth and put a spirit inside a body and made them live together with blood and air and everything. He made a human out of his own image and his own likeness by casting that. Satan has been searching for that underground workshop for ages. He sang the song of the man in Isaiah 14 about the man's authority, but he sang it about himself to try and make himself a man. The Hebrew wording declares that he sang about a back, Eyebrows and skin, flesh-covered crimson. Lucifer wanted to be a man. So instead of singing the Revelation song in Isaiah 14, when Isaiah asked, how did you fall from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? He said, instead of singing about the man that he found coming in the Revelation stones of fire, He sang the song about himself. All he could do instead of creating a man was just create a sand dog. The enemy began his search for that underground workshop. It so disrupted the first world with him trying to bring this to pass that it flooded the first world. He thinks to change times and laws. Therefore, when God put the earth back together after its tohu vabohu state, the enemy had chosen the serpent to bring forth his seed into the earth. This would have been done with religious rituals, sexual rituals, and technology all mingled together in a strategic way. Now, I'm talking about a lot of mystery today, but I'm not talking about something you can't study and find. It just takes study. But once you start to see this, it's all going to make sense to you. He couldn't create a man. All he could do was create a sand dog. That's a mystery. Before his fall, Isaiah reveals something to us that can be overlooked. Now look at Isaiah 14, verse 12. Let's start there. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, showing he was on the earth. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. He wanted the man's position in his image, in his likeness. Lucifer is speaking of a portal. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. 
He's speaking of a portal that would let him go into heaven. I will ascend into heaven, he said. He's speaking of a portal that would let him go into heaven from the earth. There are spirits that are trapped in that atmosphere, trying to get into the earth. Satan is the principality and power of the air. Satan is in this earth, and he wants to open that dimension terribly bad. Wicked governments have managed to get technology from the dark side. Men have contacted him. They've contacted demons and have learned enough to create such a sensatious or since, however you say that, desire to know more and more. The ancient Egyptians knew how to do this more than any other. They were Ham's descendants who knew the technology of bringing fallen angels into the realm of men to create a hybrid race. This is why especially the U.S. government is so obsessed with ancient Egyptian culture. Even a pyramid is on the back of our $1 bill with a prophecy of the Kumean Sibyl, Apollo's favorite Sibyl, Novus Ordu Seclorum, the New World Order. Science knows beyond a doubt that the spirit world is real. Now that's what you have to get hold of right now because we're about to dive off into something. Say, well, this is heavy. Well, it's, it's about to get heavier. Science knows beyond a doubt that the spirit world is real. They have no doubt about it. They do not know, however, how to get there. So they strive. You know, I think it was, this is April the 8th, and that's what we're talking about, and that's why we're here on this special day. I think it was Alexander, it was Alexander Crowley, who I think his mother told him he was the Antichrist. He was uh, on his honeymoon, I believe it was, in Egypt. You can check this out. And he was visiting the, the uh, 666 display or something in a museum there. And a demonic spirit spoke to him, and he wrote the book of the law, he called it, on April the 8th. Now, <clears throat> notice it was an Egyptian thing. See, the Egyptians knew more about this than the scientists do today. They were more advanced than science today. Noah was way more advanced when he built the ark than science has ever figured out yet. And that's very easy to find out. Computers don't show how smart men are. It just shows how much, how dumb they really are compared to those who didn't need them and could still build an aircraft carrier sized wooden boat, seal it, pressurize it, and float it with every species known and live in it for what, a year and 16 days or something, whatever it was. Science can't do that no matter what they try now. So, but they do invent technology that allows information to fly faster than it's ever went. That's what the scripture says. Not smarter, faster. Now, the Egyptians knew about these things. They knew how to break through to that other side. They had what was called, the, they found drawings of the, uh, the boat of a million years, they called it. It had like a, a, it almost favored an arc type platform in the middle of this boat. But on the ends of the boat were these little tornado looking things. And men for a long time couldn't figure out what that was. Until now, in modern days, they finally figured out they were wormholes. And they were contacting the underworld and would bring Osiris and I think set up or a, one of, a couple of those fallen angels, those beings, and they would bring them into this atmosphere through this thing called the boat of a million years or the tower or the tower. And so the Egyptians knew how to do this. Science is trying to figure it out now. But they're figuring out that they have to have a religious ritual in order to get it done. Not just technology. And they know it has something to do with dark matter. 
And they know it has something to do with, with these worm, or these black holes or these portals. They know this. You say, well, portals, Brother Robin, portals. Yes, portals. When Elijah faced down the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel, what was the fight over? Who could call down fire through a portal? Israel is full of portals. It's the land of portals. It's the land where God uh, touched the earth with his foot. It's the land and probably where uh, uh, Elijah called down fire could have been the place where Lucifer fell like lightning. And so he controlled that portal and it was a fight to see who could control it. And whoever could call and, and have authority over that portal, whoever they called God, is God. And that's what that was about. Science knows beyond a doubt that the spirit world is real. They just have no, they don't have any doubt about it. They just have no idea how to get there. So they strive. But they did learn enough from these ancient societies before the flood who, by the way, like I said, was more advanced than the scientists today. They discovered that they could, through rituals and using dark occultic people, could actually crack open doors or portals to the other side. Now, <clears throat> in uh, 1989, a British scientist, while working at a place called CERN, invented something called the World Wide Web, or WWW. A web is something that a spider uses to catch its prey. This World Wide Web was then abbreviated WWW, which in the Hebrew is Vav Vav Vav, which is the numerical value of six, or it is 666. And the apostle John said, it is the number of a man, 600, three score and six in Hebrew, vav, 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 or wa, 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 or 666. And CERN's logo, when you look at it, is undoubtedly, you can see, 666. If we had that, we could show it. I don't know if we have that right now. I, I don't, if you're showing it, I can't see it where I'm standing. But you can see, if you unpull these things apart, it's three sixes. Satan thinks. He strategizes. He is a scientist. Therefore, he uses technology. Satan searches for a key to that dimension to unlock it and bring those creatures from there to here. But to do that, you have to have a portal There was a portal opened over the White House about a year or so ago. Opened over the White House. People laughed at that. They said, no, it didn't. And it, but it did. There were real videos and pictures of it that was trying to be hid or discredited. But it was a fiery red swirling portal that opened. Somebody I knew even sent a security guard down there and said, go take a picture and see if there's a portal over the White House. And the security guard just laughed and said, oh, you know, that's crazy. But when he went down there, he came back and told him, said, my God, there's a portal over the White House. And it was seen on the cameras that show the White House live. But then suddenly the feed changed. There has to be a portal in order to bring something from that side to this side, from the spirit world, whether it's the dark world or the world where God is. There must be a way to bring it from the other side of that line. Elijah called fire down through a portal. Elijah was caught up through a what? Portal. Jesus ascended through the clouds in a portal, he went through that, that thing. Think about all of this. Now, 
The head of research at the CERN facility, which is the home of the Large Hadron Collider, it's a particle accelerator that's 17 miles under, uh, around underground. It's in a circle, and it's on the temple of Apollo. Now, you think about that. And what they do is they fire these particles out and they get them up to almost the speed of light. And their goal is, is when they get them to that uh, so much just right under the speed of light, they want to collide the atoms this way. They want to collide those particles this way. And it will create multiple black holes, tiny, tiny. Of course, they say there's no danger. But they don't know because they ain't done it. It's like somebody said, it's like shooting an arrow from here 100 yards away when somebody else shoots an arrow and make it hit at the precise point of each arrow and explode them. Well, this facility where they invented WWW or 666 with the logo of 666 sets on the temple of Apollo and it's underground hunting that workshop. And so they fire, these, they fire this thing up. But strangely enough, outside of the CERN facility on the temple of Apollo is the Hindu god, false god, Shiva. The demonic spirit, Shiva. It's a statue of this four-armed transgender being that looks transgender. You can't say it's a male. You can't say it's a female because it just, it looks like both with cobras coming out from under its arms and around its neck and these four arms. And I don't know if you know this, but I think it was in 2016, maybe it was somewhere around that time, they performed a, a, a mock human sacrifice underneath that statue at CERN. And it was on video. They didn't say they didn't do it because it looked absolutely real. And they didn't say they didn't do it. They were wearing the robes. They were walking around. This girl comes out in this long outfit, lays down on this altar, and they plunge a knife in her. And they never said we didn't do that. They just said, oh, it was just some of our scientists and people horsing around. Really? Really? Yeah, because that's what everybody does is just horse around with, and do that. But that was under the false god Shiva, the god of destruction, who is a contemporary almost like Apollyon on the temple of Apollo in Revelation 9, Apollyon. And it's there. This is what the head of research at CERN, the CERN facility said. He said, if they could open, crack the door open. Now, this is what he said. If they could crack the door open, that something might step through it or we might send something through it. Portals must be created in order to do it. When CERN fires up, it creates tiny black holes or portals. And it's just amazing and should be amazing to you that just so happens today on this world-famous solar eclipse, which is believed by the occultic world, is a portal to bring powers from the other side. And on this day, wouldn't you know it, CERN fires up its LHC to collide its particles right at this moment on this day, during the eclipse. Wow. Also on this day, you have NASA launching three rockets heading into the eclipse, exploding them into the eclipse. I think one before, one during, one after. They're going into that darkness with those rockets to measure something about the darkness. And, and the rockets are called APEP rockets, which is an Egyptian serpent god that does battle with Ra, the sun god. 
Now in 2015, some strange things began to happen in the earth. Now, well, let me say this. In the book of Revelation, chapter 4, verse 1, John said, I saw a door open in heaven. That word door and a voice said, come up hither. That word door is portal. It's a portal. He said, I saw a portal open in heaven. There was a portal opened over the White House, like we said. Now, the occultic world creates portals by cutting out circles and putting them on their ceilings and so forth so that spirits can enter their presence. A Ouija board is nothing but a portal in a triangle to invite demonic spirits from the other side to come through the triune authority of a man and speak into their life. That's a Ouija board. If you go into some restaurants and you look in the back of a statue of Buddha, you find a circle cut in its back where the spirit enters. A portal. Portals, never forget this. Portal. And we read in Revelation 9 that there's a key given to a fallen angel that fell to the earth to open the bottomless pit or the portal. A portal that leads to an infinite hole or a dimension. When it opens, a great smoke uh, comes up and is seen, almost like a power overload. And these creatures come out of that pit from that dimension. And they have a king over them called Apollyon. And CERN built its facility with its circle under the ground on the temple of Apollo. Shiva, the god of destruction, is standing out front. CERN is going to try and open that dimension. They were going to try and open it September of 2015. Now, there's been several times this has been attempted Now, they're attempting it every day. Now, I'm not talking about little Wiccans out in the woods with their oak leaves naked having sex all around on the leaves. They are are serving the devil, but they're just tiny minions just to cause problems. Those are the devils with them. And they can push some of them into human sacrifice, I guess. But I'm going to tell you something. Here is something that's been tried before, and it's always, and, and it's, it's come about since the very fall of man. Nimrod was involved. Different ones have been involved. I want you to listen to something. The biggest one ever tried is something I don't know that I've ever heard anybody say. But I want you to listen to this in Matthew chapter 27. Now watch this close in Matthew chapter 27, and we're going to look at verse, oh, 45. Well, yeah, 45. Now watch this. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God Why hast thou forsaken me? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there when they heard that said, This man calleth for Elias. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, Let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. Now watch close. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the grave after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. In other words, there was a three-hour eclipse type thing that took place because the God of life himself that had become flesh had become our sin on the cross 
He never committed a sin. There was no sin in him, no guile in his mouth. He was perfect in every way, but he died the death of a sinner with our sin, not his. And if you start studying this out in Greek, you find out that the consequent misery of hell came up on the earth that day. And they were coming to annex the earth. And when they came for Adam's harvest for what he had done, there was the sun was blackened. There was a great portal. And those demonic spirits came that day. And it was a three hour long darkness. And so it came, but it couldn't get to you and I because it, he had our sin. It went straight to him. He was the harvest, he was the payment, he gave himself a ransom. So when it came, watch this, Satan thought he had won this during this blackout. I hope you're hearing this. And it said then there was an earthquake. People talk about that happening during the eclipses. But it said the graves were opened. He was going to do this. This was his thing. He thought he had won it. It was the largest attempt ever made to set the Antichrist up at that moment. And when he opened the graves, nobody would get up. The scripture didn't say they got up when the graves were opened. It said they got up when he resurrected. And then they went into the city. So he is the resurrection. But that was tried in Matthew 27. And it was tried during a blackout or like an eclipse for three hours. So Satan knows, see, because the Hebrews taught that his throne sat on the moon, which was in the earth, but Jericho means the moon. And that's why the story of the, of the good Samaritan deals with Jericho. And it said the thieves came and stripped him of his raiment. Speaking of Adam, speaking of all of that, it said the priesthood couldn't save him. The Le Levite or the Levitical law couldn't save him. But the Samaritan in his journey came and poured in oil and wine, the blood and the anointing, the anointing and the blood set him on his own faith. His own beast carried him to the comforter at the end, which is the Holy Ghost. Said, keep him for at least two days. One day is a thousand years. A thousand years is one day. He said, if I'm any longer in my, re in my return, I'll pay it back. I'll pay you what is owed for him when I get here. So notice this. It was Jericho, the moon. It's always in phases of the moon that this thing happens. You look at the symbol of Islam, the, the, the crescent and the star. There's no phase of the moon that looks like that. But when an eclipse happens, it looks just like that. And so you start looking at these things, and then you look at, at Klaus Schwab and Noah Harari. Noah Harari, they call him the prophet. He's not a prophet. He's a sibyl. He's a sibyl like the Kumean sibyl. He's dealing with like the Anides of Virgil. He's dealing with like all of these things that the Cumaean Sibyl, uh, Apollo coming, oh, Saturn's reign, Satan's reign. It says, Jupiter, bless our undertaking. That was a Sibyl's prophecy. And it made it on the back of our $1 bills because part of it says Nova, Novus Ordo Seclorum. Bless our endeavors for this new world order. And the pyramids there with Hebrew type writing. And so you start looking at all of this and you start realizing something. This has been a plan. Satan came closer that day when Jesus died on that cross. It said if he had known, he would have never crucified the Lord of glory. He thought that that was the day. If he, he would have been better to keep him from being crucified. Because those spirits were coming to on that day for Adam's harvest. He would have been better off to just let him not be crucified and fought to keep him alive. He might have accomplished something. 
But Jesus died, became sin with our sin, went into hell, paid the price, defeated that eclipse. Notice when it was when the darkness was over on the ninth hour, he cried, my God, my God. In other words, he beat it. He beat it all. And he couldn't get, Satan couldn't get it done. He'd have never crucified him if he'd have known. Now, Jesus knew about these things. Well, I don't know if Jesus knew about eclipses. Well, he created the sun and the moon. Don't you know he knew about it? Why else did he say something like this? When the Son of Man comes, it'll be like the lightning from the east to the west. And he said there will be people sleeping in two in one bed, and one will be taken, one left. Two will be working in the field, one taken and one left. He's talking, they didn't have night shift. He's talking about the earth is divided into hemispheres. When it's light on one side, it's dark on the other side. People are sleeping on one side of the earth while the people are working on the other side. He had a revelation of what he was doing before he got to that cross. Now CERN was going to try to open this pit on, in September of 2015. During that time, Madonna suddenly began to do these bizarre concerts. She started on a tour for her album or her CD, Rebel Heart, and she started doing these bizarre things on stage, wearing horns and, and all kinds of demonic outfits and performing rituals on stage because the dark world that governments tied themselves to have figured out it's not a, technology is not enough. It must be mingled to worship. Remember when the Antichrist comes, he says, though you have to take his mark, which is probably a technological thing, but it says you have to worship him. It's always tied because that's what Satan is. He's a scientific type angel. CERN was going to try to open this dimension on September of 2015. Madonna was on her rebel heart tour. And her opening theme was desecration of the bride and arrival of fallen angels. <laughs> she began to perform these bizarre rituals on stage, clearly occultic and clearly ritualistic. The Pope came to tour. Whenever, wherever the Madonna went, the Pope went. The Rebel Heart Tour went to D.C. in September of that year. And that's something. It has to do with these things, not just time. But they could not bring it to pass. They saw their next shot at it in 2020. They were flying by the seat of their pants for a while. They knew what they wanted to accomplish, but after 2015, they did not know how to bring it to pass. And they began to run the numbers and figure it out. It was obvious that this is what happened. I remember I, I'm, I'm trying to find it where Henry Kissinger said that Obama was groomed to bring in the new world order. Almost as soon as Obama became the president, he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. For what? No one really knew. But you know, the Antichrist was, uh, he's, he's talked about as bringing such peace. It looked as if he was going to be the Antichrist. People said he might be. He had all the traits of it. Everything seemed to be parallel. They even called him the anointed one. He didn't call himself that, at least not in public, but others called him that. And in 2010, he appeared as a six-armed Shiva, the Hindu god of destruction that sits outside of CERN on the cover of Newsweek with different essential things in each hand, military, medical, money, housing, peace, and the world, with a caption that read, the god of all things, or G-O-A-T, goat. 
Around this time in 2015 or 2016, a bizarre ritual in the dedication of the Gothard portal in Switzerland was performed. It was the recreation of the bringing forth of Pan from the underworld, the same one Jesus was speaking uh, to his disciples about in Caesarea Philippi in Israel in Matthew chapter 16. And they did the ritual almost to the letter. <clears throat> and it was called the dedication of the Gothard portal. And world leaders were there. Four major religions were there. All of this going on around 2015 now and 16, you have to remember all of this. And CERN was cranking up in September around this same time. In September of 2015, going to open that other dimension. However, when CERN failed to open the bottomless pit in 2015, they turned their attention to 2024. When Obama left office, he gave an interview in Lima, Peru. And this is a headline. Now, I'm going to read this headline to you, and this is what it said after he left office. It said, how Trump's election shook Obama. He said, what if we were wrong? Reporting on this, one reporter wrote it this way. President Trump, pre and this is on May 30th, 2018, this reporter reported this. President Trump's election reportedly made former President Obama second guess everything. A new book by Benjamin Rhodes, one of Obama's longtime advisors, paints a portrait of a troubled Obama who struggled to understand the meaning of his successor's victory. Shortly after the 2016 election, Obama wondered whether his administration had pushed too far. The New York Times reports, he said this, Sometimes I wonder, listen now, whether I was 10 or 20 years too early. Obama reportedly mused aloud. This denotes purpose and motive. According to Henry Kissinger, Obama was groomed to bring in the New World Order. This was the prophecy for a long time, the prophecy of the false god Apollo's Cumaean Sibyl, which included Novus Ordo Seclorum. It comes from Virgil's Aeneids, which, uh, where it was prophesied, Jupiter blessed this to bring a New World Order, which included a hybrid people, a hybrid race. It is on the back of every $1 bill so that even the poorest person can handle and read the prophecy and distribute the prophecy. There's always been a dark order to push the world to a one world order in order to push in the reign of the serpent's seed, the Antichrist, the beast and his mark. Most politicians do not know the total purpose of it all, maybe handfuls. For instance, Obama was sincere in his endeavors. He was just sincerely wrong. In other words, Obama thought everything he was doing was for the good of the nation, but he was only doing what he was groomed to do. The knowledge of this dark order is only on a need-to-know basis. People like Bill Ayers knew, apparently Kissinger. They always have to have a Sybil. Never forget that. The Sybil always touts the same prophecy of the Cumaean Sybil of Apollo, a new world order, a hybrid race of people. Now, you don't need to forget that. So, a Sybil always touts that prophecy of the Cumaean Sibyl, the, the prophet of Apollo, the favorite Sibyl of Apollo, which includes a new world order, remember, and a hybrid race of people. Now we see CERN with its three sixes. We see them with the Great Hadron Collider, the LHC, the Particle Accelerator, 
We see it underground in a circle. We see them admittedly trying to open up another dimension, hoping something will step through it or they can send something through it. We see them do a mock-up human sacrifice out under the false god Shiva. We see all of this happening. And then at the same time, then we see uh, the WEF, the World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab, you know, he talks like something out of a James Bond movie, rubbing a cat. And he says, you're going to die and eat bugs and live like we tell you and have nothing and love it. But he has a sibyl, Noah, Yuval Noah Harari. That's his sibyl. And people call him their prophet. He's not a prophet. He's a sibyl. And he touts the same thing as the Cumean sibyl in, in the Anides of Virgil. He says, he tells the people, there's going to be a, a, a new world order. And he says, and people will, will be not quite human. So we'll accomplish this in three ways, some with chips, and then some will be kind of cyborgs, uh, part machine, part human. And he said, and then some will just be straight up AIs with silicone, non-carbon based bodies. Then uh, I, when the reporter was shook up and said, well, will we be human anymore? He said, not as you know human. He said, but it will come a time when it'll be just like a screen's been pulled down in front of your eyes, and suddenly everything changes. In other words, whatever they're planning on doing, you will look at red and think it's green, and you'll think it's always been green. You'll be able to look, you, whatever they want you to see, it's, you, you will swear that's what you've always known. And so when they started pressing him on some of this, asking him, he don't try to hide it. This Sybil just openly spoke out. Now, can you see he's touting the prophecy of the Cumean Sybil, which, by the way, is on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel between the prophets. And it's a giant, transgender-looking man-woman and it's almost like Michelangelo left us a clue and he's got six fingers on his hand. And he's reading this book with this do-rag thing on his head. And so Harari's just touting the Sybil's prophecy about a hybrid people. Now, I'm not making this up. You know, the more you talk about it, it just sounds wild. But you know it's true. They're doing it. And they're talking about it out in the open. And so he said, and when they ask him this, I mean, you, you got to think about all of this a minute. And then when they were asked this, they said, um, you, know, you know, let me tell you, let me tell you this story of this video I saw. I saw a video someone had made. I don't know who it was, but it was, it was really in-depth. It was, it was kind of a brilliant made thing. Where they said, um, it showed this woman. She was a tall, uh, a black lady, well-to-do, had short hair, earrings, just, just really well-to-do off. And her husband was a, a white guy standing there, which is all cool, but it was like the video they were trying to make everything so woke, like anything goes. I mean, which is, you know, the, the race thing is stupid anyway. It don't much matter to me if he was green and polka dotted. And they don't to God. But that's not what was being shown. And so they're standing there looking at their daughter who looks nothing like either of them. And the daughter's sitting there. You see what I mean? They're trying to push it over the top. If that's not enough, 
You know these little filters you put on your phone that shows you like a little deer? You can, they'll take a picture and then they put this filter over them and then they talk like this and they have these little eyes and little ears and say, oh, look how cute that filter is. Well, their daughter had this filter on their face. And in real life, and the mother said, honey, we're going to need you to turn that filter off so we can talk. So she reaches up and hits a button on a headband, and it goes away, and she just lays the headband on the table. In other words, showing you what's coming, virtual thing. So then she's sitting there, and she says, I've always had this problem with being in this body. And the mother said, and the dad, well, honey, you know, I, it's, it's, um, we understand you're, you're a, if you're like a man in a girl's body, we, we get it. She said, it's not transgender that I'm talking about. She said, I don't have any problem with that. She said, it's this body being in this body. And they were, they said, what? She said, yes, you can go to this certain place and they will upload your consciousness to the cloud. And so when they upload it to the cloud, then he, she said, I'm talking about transhuman. I'm not talking about transgender. So then you can upload your consciousness to the cloud. And they said, well, what happens to your body? She said, they recycle it. They said, you mean you want to be killed? She said, no, I want to live forever. I want to live forever on the cloud. Now, isn't that something? Now it shows you where it's going. Now, you know, I, I can't tell this right, but, but John was talking to me about it. He could tell you way more about it, but I'm just going to tell at it. Where, where he was, there was this AI that they could program like it was Mario, the video game Mario. And, you know, the character. And so the AI was talking and believed it's Mario. Well, it's got all this information flying all over the cloud and the web, and so it could talk like it's Mario, and, it, and it's like it's just really Mario. But then I think John asked it a question or something, and maybe I've got this wrong, but he said, uh, what do you think of Charles Martinet, which was the voice of Mario? But it was a certain Mario from a certain game. In other words, it was all about this certain console game. And immediately the computer started talking back and said, oh, yeah, Charles Martinet was this, he's this, he's this, quoting the Wikipedia page or whatever, all the information. He said he was, some say he's the best voice of Mario ever. And John said, but I thought you were Mario. And it said, oh, well, uh, sometimes I mess up, you know. Now, if you just put something that silly and you think about it a minute and the enemy could get people going to a certain place. Now, you talk about dark and evil. Get people going to a certain place and they get to this place to where they talk you into uploading your consciousness to a computer and they're talking about that now. Then out of all your Facebook, out of all your YouTube, out of all your phone tracking, out of everything you've ever done, out of all this stuff you're walking everywhere every day, and it's, it's recording every step, every word. You never notice you say something, it shows up on your phone. It develops patterns all through you, tracking you like algorithms. There's so much information about you. That a computer, an AI, and, they, and an AI can draw a stark image of you. I mean stark, without looking at a picture, just draw it from the information and looking at other pictures that it's already online. 
Imagine it could talk from a computer to you as if it's you. And if a generation of young people could be convinced to upload their consciousness to the cloud and they could go to a certain place, all they would have to do is just go over there and sit down and start recounting any memories they have that just sudden, if in case the web don't already contain it. And then after that, recycle their body and then their loved ones go to the cloud like the great cloud of witnesses and sit there and talk to them and the computer pull up a stark AI image of you and sit there and talk to them through your, and even could use deep fake to make you move and just show these images and everything you said to it. Well, it can answer because it knows everything about it. And you would be deceived in believing they were alive eternally. Now you wonder how Satan could do this stuff. In technology, he can. And it'd be a real easy way to reduce population quick. Down to 500 million or whatever. So you start to see how these things are possible. And it sounds like a bad sci-fi movie until you realize that the woke agenda is just trying to push you into trans mode. Trans. Klaus Schwab said, now watch this. Klaus Schwab said, we are not in crisis. We are in transformation mode. And those who manage the transformation will do well. Noah Harari, their Sybil, was asked this. He said, they said, what good will humans be? This is what he said. He said, we don't need so many humans. They said, well, what? But I guarantee you, he's one of them you need. He'd never say you don't need him. And then the next thing you know, he says, we don't need so many humans. They said, well, wh well what are you going to do with all these humans? He said, well, we'll keep them entertained with their phones and video games. And he said, well, humans are needed for something, data. He said, they'll be needed for data. What's he talking about? He said in 2020 was the year that men agreed to be surveyed under the skin. Name but one thing he could be talking about, which explains all the metal associated with it. And those can manage to change, and then there's those who can't. And so he talks about all this stuff. The Sybil still touting the, the, the prophecy of the Kumean Sybil. People say, Brother Robin, oh, now I ain't, I ain't hardly said anything during this whole eclipse uproar. But I'm trying to tell you some truths here that maybe you just need to ask some of these questions. CERN's logo, 666. Have you ever, I don't know if we showed that or not. I, I assume we did, or, or I, I hope we did. Assuming is a dangerous thing sometimes. But, but the WEF, the New World Order, the new great reset. Their logo. Have you ever saw it and looked at it? Just somebody tell me, just tap on something and tell me if you're showing that right now. Look at it. Now look at 666 for CERN. See that? Now look at their logo, the WEF's logo. Put that up there again. That's an eclipse. So you've got these two logos and these two things happening. And Satan tried to take over everything, and the great eclipse of the three hours Jesus was on that cross. But Jesus beat the hell out of it. That's what he did. Now, so in 2015, CERN failed to open that great lid to the bottomless pit and let those demonic hordes out of that pit. 
He failed to do that. So they built this LHC on the temple of, Pol uh, of Apollo with Shiva, the Hindu god of destruction outside and so forth. Shiva was also the statue, the false god that was present when China met with the WHO, which is also in Switzerland, and WEF is also in Switzerland, and CERN is also in Switzerland, and the big Gothard portal, they recreated the ceremony of Pan, and after that a pandemic hit, is also in Switzerland. Anyway, CERN failed to open the pit. And when Trump turned over the apple cart, this caused them to immediately turn their attention to the next available time to open this great lid. And that was 2024. April the 8th, 2024. As soon as Trump won and just flipped the whole cart over, Hillary Clinton said, we must not let, uh, let up on Trump. We must persecute him 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They had to have him out by 2020. So around 2016, they did this pan ceremony of the dedication of the Gothard portal in Switzerland where they brought pan up out of hell to start a pandemic. Why? Because governments have figured out they have to employ the occult. Hallelujah. And this pandemic by 2020, oh my Lord, lies were flying everywhere about it. They showed these giant holes in the middle of New York City where they were just piling bodies on top of each other, mass graves covering them up. All this was going on. People uh, were dying, but not nearly as many as reported. But it was enough to create fear so big that food rationing was happening, a surveil was being mandated by a lot of employers. Almost all government agencies mandated it. 2024 was their next target date on that date. Now, you say, this is going a long time. We're not done yet. Now, I want to tell you of 1964 for a moment and how portals are formed in the spirit. Now, in 1964, we wonder sometimes how all of this happened. See, spirits have to get involved in the affairs of men in order to change something. You, you, it's, you can't, you know, you can threaten people, you can do this, you can do that, and they'll, they'll obey because they fear for their lives uh, and so forth, just like they fear death. And so they can be controlled by food. You can only have two cans of green beans. Well, I can tell you what you can do with your can of green beans. But people say, yo, you can't have, you, you just obviously don't know me. You looked at me and said, you got to have, you can't have but two beanie weenies. I'd tell you to put that can of beanie weenies where the sun don't shine. Because I'm not terrorist moved. I'm not to be treated like I'm some hostage. And neither are anybody who thinks in their heart freedom. And so, and Jesus is the ultimate freedom. And so, in 1964, back during the days of the Klan and all of that, when it was so huge and that stupid movement that separated us all by color and all of that, just a, the hideous, most hideous thing. Racism is the ugliest thing that ever walked. If everybody was the same color, if everybody was lily white or coal black, wouldn't make any difference. If everybody was the same, they'd find something else Satan would to divide us over. The shape of your ear is different, and all the shapeless ears are the ones to be ostracized. He'd do it all. He'd do something. It's a spirit of division, and we 
are not to let that in the church. I want the speckled and spotted in our church. I want, I want the, the, the white, the black, the Hispanic, the, the Asian, the, the whatever there is out there. Let's just come here to Church International and, and, and marry and have children and let's grow the speckled and spotted flock of Jacob because the strength is in the speckled and spotted. Anyway, so in 1964, an event happened in this, in this earth. Now, there was three young men who went down to Philadelphia, Mississippi to organize voter registration among the black churches. It was one black young man and two Jewish young men. There was three of them. They went into Mississippi <clears throat> they began to order it, and I think the Klan had burned like 90 black churches or so. I don't know how many. I may be wrong on the number. But they were scared of, of the speckled and spotted. And so, and, and you can see how it was just weakening everything with this hideous group. So they go down there, and it works on either side. You don't get a bunch of white uh, devils together and say that we are the way, but you don't get a bunch of black ones either and say we're the way. It's the speckled and spotted that scares the devil so bad. And so there was two Jewish young men and one black young man, college age or so, went down to Philadelphia to organize voter registration. When they came into town and they had figured out what they were doing, they had them picked up, arrested. They put them in a little half underground jail there. Then I think they let them out that night and then followed them out, stopped them again, took them out, and killed them. It was called the Mississippi Burning. You know, there was a movie made about it and so forth because they burned their station wagon and strode out the crime so it looked like it happened everywhere. Well, it was all over voter registration, voter fraud. That created a portal in this nation to let in voter fraud. And those spirits entered at that moment. Well, we were down in Mississippi. I remember a Stephen Silver song I sung on. It's supposed to be Elvis. Y'all don't remember that, Robin Will, but he said, Down in Mississippi, not far from Tupelo. And everybody thought it was Elvis, but it wasn't. Uh, I was singing as one of the Jordan airs on the back of it, on the background. But anyway, down in Mississippi, then we went down there and we was invited to come and, and, and uh, speak. Uh, we were speaking to the Choctaw Nation, and we were going in there, and we were ended up in this building. Well, I'm standing there. I don't know any of this. I don't know anything I just told you. But I'm just standing there, and somebody told me the story and said, you do know right there across the street, and it's not really a street, it's just like an alley, said from where we were, said right there's the jail they put them boys in. Said right over there's the street Martin Luther King marched down, right beside you. I'm on the bus, and a major prophet called me and said, Robin, I don't know what all you're doing. He said, but you're... You're there to close a voter fraud portal. <laughs> they don't even know where I'm at. I said, there's a big angel standing behind you. So we stood there, and I didn't tell anybody in the Lord. We had two services, and the Lord said, on the second one, close that portal. So on the second one, the 11th hour team was there, and we closed it. When we did... They gave me a call, I don't know, a couple weeks after that and said the man that did all of that, his house that had been empty for almost 20 years, said it burned down. Well, that portal was closed. Now, that was opened in, 2000, I mean, in 1964. Now, 2024, is 60 years from when that was opened. But in the spirit world, time is nothing. 
So 60 years later, Satan planned on opening another one. And it would rendezvous with the spirits that came in the earth from that one. But if it was still open, it'd just be a constant stream of spirits in the earth. And voter fraud would never end. I fight in the spirit. I'm not talking about the flesh. The flesh is just the outcropping of what's happening in the air. And the principalities and powers of the air doing battle. And so it was supposed to rendezvous. 60 years later, 60 is represented by the letter Asamic in Hebrew. It's the 15th letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And Asamic, its symbol is a circle or a portal. And it's almost like a serpent's mouth in a way. And it's supposed to be, get this, 60 is the number, I think it's the number 60 is the number of the crowning of an earthly king. They're trying to bring about a king in the earth. So there had to be another portal on that year, the 60th year, created. They couldn't do it in 2015. And remember, when Obama gave that report, he said, I, I don't know, maybe I was 10, 20 years too early. Well, it's been 16 years since, since uh, 2008 to 2024. 10 to 20 years. Well, what did he know? I don't know what he knew. I don't even know what politicians know. But I know what devils think about. And they only tell it on a need-to-know basis. So 2024 was the time to try it again. It was very important to them, to those on the dark side in the dark world, to do this at this time. Because there must be a rendezvous point in which to open it. Now they have to create another portal in 2024. They have to. And so they were trying to, to form something. They have to form a portal. And people don't understand what all of that is. But I think by now you get it that portals have to be somewhere for the spirit world to enter. Now I want to show you something. In 2017... Uh, August 21st, I think it was, 2017, a total solar eclipse came in in Oregon and came straight down the middle of the continental U.S., went out in South Carolina, exited, and it was the path of the totality of darkness. That's the first time they had really told that, the path of the totality of darkness. And when it came through, I remember we was over here at the old church, and the Lord told me, he said, now you go outside and you stand there while that eclipse happens. And when it comes over, you tell that thing, take your staff and you tell that thing that those, he said, because fallen angels are going to ride in that path. They're going to fall. They're going to be in that darkness and they want to fall out into these cities. And he said, you tell them to stay there. So we did three hours. We stood there told them things to stay there, sounded shofars into that darkness and so forth. Now, I want you to, to keep this in your mind and kind of picture the U.S. with that dark path coming from Oregon to South Carolina. Now, don't show the picture yet. I'm going to show it in a minute. Then, in, on April 8th, today, 2024, there's another total solar eclipse that everybody's buzzing about, and it's coming from Texas straight up, and it's going up toward Maine and so forth like that. And it makes an X across the nation. It makes an X across the nation, or the letter Tav in the Hebrew alphabet. It's the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And people say, well, X marks the spot and this and that. Now, put up the picture of the United States with the X across it. And I want to show everybody that picture. 
Okay. You see that? Now, if you look close, where the X crosses, now this is the two paths over the nation, and where that X crosses, there's a little diamond-shaped window or a diamond-shaped portal right there. And with the two paths of darkness, it's darker in that little diamond window than it is on anywhere else on the path. And that's the only place where it crosses that the two, both the 2017 and the one today, meet right there in that diamond-shaped window. It created a portal. In Jesus' day, it was during the eclipse, Satan tried to do it. it, was, it it's always during the same thing, and eclipses are portals. Uh, the 666, the, the, the crescent, the, the logo of the WEF, everything works. The, the dark forces that be know what they're doing, while everybody else just sticks their glasses on and goes, Oh, oh look, it's darkness. It's the totality of darkness. You could have picked any other name. But the totality of darkness means there's demonic spirits hiding. There's fallen beings in these paths. But they can't get into this earth without a portal. And Satan uh, on today on the moon is, will block out and create a portal. The occultic world believes it's a portal. The, the Native American people, they always said something to this effect, that on when a total solar eclipse happens, it upends the natural order of everything. It creates chaos. Birds go to sleep. Uh, animals uh, that usually come out at night suddenly show up. Everything starts happening. And now they're talking about trillions of worms going to come up out of the ground during this eclipse. But in that window, now, that was the portal. Now, show that the X one more time. Okay, you see it? That little diamond-shaped portal right there is where a window is created. The rest of it's just paths. But right there, there's a window created. Let's look at, the, let's look at that window up closer. There it is right up close. Now, you can see the areas. You can see where it's at. You can see all that. But there's no name within that window, but I can tell you where that window is. Right almost dead center in that window is the town of Carbondale, Illinois. That's where it's at. And so the, the window, think about it, all the spirits that could come through on that path, could, when they hit that window, they could just fall out of that portal into this planet. And crown an earthly king. The Antichrist. But just suppose the line that came, the one you see coming over Kansas and Missouri, like that coming down, that was in 2017. Just suppose before this one arrives at Carbondale coming from Texas, that you went right to the center of that and blew that path apart until it don't connect anymore. And there's no window. That's just blown apart. Then when the other one comes across, there's no portal to fall through. Oh, this is so wild, Brother Robbie. This is the wildest thing. Well, it ain't no more wild. It ain't as wild as Noah Harari saying we're going to make you a cyborg. Well, t today, a lot of things are happening. The anticipation of that window is 
is being really thought about. The anticipation. It's a day of anticipation. It's a day that another portal is supposed to form. But just suppose you went into that line where that path was coming across and you went right there to where the only place they really intersect is Carbondale, Illinois. Just suppose you went there and you had a bunch of believers there and you went there with the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the praise of, of the Most High God and just blew a hole through that thing so that when the other one comes through, all of a sudden they get there and they can't find their buddies because none of them can find the window to fall through. Well, that's just exactly what happened. The Lord had told me, I don't know how many weeks ago, go to Carbondale. Go up there and blow a hole through that thing. In the spirit we're talking about. So in the spirit, we stood there with 500 believers we raised a prophetic sound in the middle of that city. And there's something strange about that. All of us agree that when we got off that airplane, that a witch met us at the airport, tried their best to get us to drink something. Isn't that something? They had an LGBTQ thing that was up from the, the place we were playing. Something there. I, I, I don't know if it was one of their main places, but here's the thing. When Roe v. Wade was reversed, Carbondale didn't even have an abortion clinic. And then when Roe v. Wade was reversed, suddenly they opened too. And the people didn't even want it. The people didn't want it. There were people there that night said we didn't want it. But Satan recognized where that window's going to cross. He's got to get him some strongholds there. He planned on dropping it out. Well, it's just little old bitty city. Well, Israel was a little bitty country too, and Bethlehem was the smallest of all of them. But that's where the king was born. And so this is, was the plan until that night. There were generals of the faith flew in that night and stood and prayed and blew a hole through that thing. The Elijah stream was there. We blew a hole through it. And when we left, it was different. It was different. Now, when that arrives, they're, gonna, they're in for a great surprise. Now, what's, what else is going to happen today? Well, you know, it's going to be uh, today, April the 8th, 2024, CERN fires up the giant Hadron Collider to create dark matter and open a portal. Today, April 8th, 2024, NASA will fire three rockets into the eclipse looking for dark matter. They've named the rockets APEP which is the serpent god of Egypt who does battle with the sun. Today, April 8th, 2024, there's this comet that will become visible that's passing over. It's known as the devil comet because it has these horns and it's flying over. It's like one person said, it's just been chilling out there all this time for a while, but when it gets that dark, you're going to be able to see this devil comet coming through. While there's a giant portal forming, while NASA's firing three rockets into it to, to measure dark matter and all that happens in it, while CERN is trying to collide and create these portals, while all of this is going on, we know this is the 60th year since the voter fraud portal. We know that the number 60 is the Hebrew letter Somic, which is a portal. And as one said, it even looks like the open mouth of a serpent. It is the time that is tied to the coming of an earthly king. 4-8-2024 totals 20, which is when they began the initiative to plan to do this. It happens on today. April 8th, 2024 is a Monday, or it's called the Moon Day. It's where we got the name. It's a pagan name. 
The second day of the week has been classified as the moon's day since Babylonian times. It's the god Mani or Mani riding in a chariot. The Hebrews teach that Satan's throne used to sit on the moon. We are in the time when kings fall. We are in the time when politicians fall. We are in the time when judges fall. We are in a peculiar time. We are in a time when the most unlikely win. However, we were brought to the kingdom for such a time as this. We are in the time of that Haman's fall. We are in this strategic time. One will fall on the floor of Congress during this time. Soon you'll hear of something like that. You'll hear of that. I hear something about a bill, and I hear the name Strauss. Today is a day of anticipation. People are anticipating what will happen next. God does not play catch-up, my brother and sister. He's already ahead of the situation. Today, the sign in the heavens of the portal will show up. Today is the day that hidden powers of wicked people are planning to act. The plan of the ages is upon us today. Today was their best chance. A lot that thought they would see it, the clouds will block it. A lot of things are happening today. So what are we going to do today on the 11th hour? Woo, Brother Robin, that's a long teaching. I hadn't said anything about any of this much until today because I didn't want, I didn't want to tip the enemy off about Carbondale, that window. We called for revival in Carbondale. We called revival down from that. X marks the spot, the spot for revival. And the Christians there, man, they're, they're in it. They know what they want. They're calling for a move of the Holy Ghost in Carbondale. Once again, the seed of the woman is stepping on the head of the seed of the serpent. This was their greatest chance to do it. This was it. You know, Noah Harari said this. You hate to quote a sibyl like that. But this will help you. He said, he was asked recently, do you think Donald Trump will win the election? He said, it's likely. He said, but if he does, it will be the kind of death blow to the new world uh, order or reset that we worked on so far. It'll just be the death blow to it if he wins. Now, that goes to show you. Now, I want you to see something else, too. If you think this is not a spiritual battle, I want you to think about this. While AIs are rewriting the Bible everywhere right now, China's rewriting a Bible. The AIs are rewriting a Bible, and they can easily get things out of order. And an AI could write a Bible that, that has all the coexist religions blended in it to where it all makes sense. You know, in the Chinese, uh, when they wrote the, started rewriting the Bible, in the story where Jesus uh, lifted up the woman called in adultery and said, let he who is without sin among you cast the first stone. In their Bible, they, he said that. They didn't stone her, so he did. Showing them that you can't defy government. So these AIs are rewriting these Bibles. I seen someone the other day that had a, they, you know, they'll snag these, these stupid things and they'll just let an AI search something and they'll just put some kind of random speech together. Show my picture. It's always got a picture of Trump with a crown or something. Or, I don't know, riding an elephant, whatever. Not riding an elephant, but he's, he's doing something. And then they got these other pictures and, and they'll say something I didn't even say. But I noticed that one picture the other day, my face, I could tell it was me, but it looked too different and it looked too smooth and my eyes were different. It was an AI drawn picture. 
And so you see these stark images of these AIs. They draw this stuff. And then I've seen a stark image, this, this painting that was just magnificent, telling a Bible story, and they'll have these accents, and they'll talk, and it's all AI-generated. But then it showed this biblical scene with a minivan coming down through the middle of it because the AI saw it that way. And I watched one that was out of order telling the story of the prophet Elijah and Elisha. I said, wait a minute, that, that didn't happen to Elisha. That happened to Elijah. But the AI said it was Elisha and put it out of order. Well, during all of this time, when they're trying to digitally rewrite the Bible, I want, you to rem I want you to know something. See, that's why I'm always the one that says, you'll hear me say on any program I'm on, we get to talking about it, I'll say, don't, don't include all these other books. You say there's lost books of the Bible, but if there's lost books of the Bible, you don't know what's left. You have no faith in the Word then because you don't know what's lost. Digital, the digital world hates the written page because it can't be edited. And so in the middle of all these AIs telling all this, rewriting the Bible over in their own image, doing all kinds of things, and Noah Harari saying Trump would be the death blow to what they've created in this new world reset, new world order. Suddenly, Trump shows up on the scene. You ready for this? Holding a Bible, a written Bible, and says this is the King James Version Bible. God bless the USA Bible. And millions of them are flooding into people's homes. Right at the time Satan thought he would open the portal, crown a new king, do everything he's doing, have the new reset take place, and have the digital Bible that would blend everything together, then God shows up and has Trump hold up a Bible, a written King James Bible, and floods the world with it. Now you think that's not a spiritual battle? Why did the Bible get involved? And then you hear Christians, oh, he's just using that as a prop. You know what? You ought to shut your ignorant mouth. You're, you're, uh, do you realize what you're saying? You're saying we don't need to put the written Bible throughout all the earth. Do you realize without the written page, it's the only thing that can't be edited? It's the only thing that can't be edited. Everything on that computer can be edited. They even say your DNA can be edited. Just like a data program on a computer, they can edit your DNA. But they can't edit the written page because it's already written. And if they tried to do it, you'd see it. And then right when they think they're going to do it, God uses an old format that goes all the way back to it is written. It is written. And remember, that's what uh, Jesus defeated the devil with. It is written. And now everything's going on and, and Trump shows up and the Lord has inspired uh, uh, Lee Greenwood to do this Bible. You, God bless the USA Bible. But it's just the King James Bible. In written form, well, it's poor quality. I don't care if, it, if it's a 50-cent dollar store Bible. God's flooding millions of them into the earth, and we're defeating the enemy right now by it is written. It is written. So you ought to be ashamed of yourself criticizing him, Christians. Anybody that wants to put this authorized print Bible in the earth by the millions, why ain't you rejoicing? It's because you're too damn money-minded. That's all. You think of money. And I said, damned on purpose. Yeah, he's a cussing prophet. Damned, damned, damned. Because that's where it came from. Anything would try to stop the written word is a damned agenda.
coming out of hell, spewed out of that pit. I ain't apologizing for that. Don't ask me to. You have to, you think about it. It is written. We are winning by it is written. Do you see that? By it is written. It cannot be defeated. If Jesus defeated it by the written word, now do you see the Bible being held up. And you know what he said about it in the commercial? It just thrilled me. I'd love to see any president say this. I ain't seen one of them say it. You know, one time he said, we're just going to go by this. Then another time he picked up a Bible and marched down a street with it. And now there's millions of them going. If, if just the 80 million people that voted for him the last time ordered the Bible, you got 80 million printed Bibles in the earth that can't be edited. They'd have to try to confiscate them. Oh, try that. That wouldn't be good. Not right now. And so he, he's holding up the Bible. And you know what he says? He said, this is my favorite book. Dear God, this is my favorite book. He said, I got many of them in my house. He said, it's my favorite book, and I know it's some of yours too. And buddy, you can see it on his face. The man's sincere. So we're winning by it is written. So I came by here on the 11th hour today to tell you that. I'm looking for a certain time. It's about 1 o'clock here. I think the totality of darkness comes over Carbondale at 158. 58 minutes from now. Now, the buddies of all those demons that's been in those paths are about to be in for a big surprise because there's a hole in the first line. And they had no way of telling their stupid occultic people because they don't understand. They can't get in the light. Now, I want you to hear this. St. John 1 says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were, were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Are you ready for this one? It says, in him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shined shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. The darkness could not hold it down and seize upon it. This is the way it is. This is what you're looking at. The light shined into the darkness, into those portals, into those black holes, into that, the, the eclipses. It's always the light piercing into it. And the darkness can't win. It can't hold it down. There was something else I wanted to tell you about that, but now I, I, I don't know what it was. I'll, I'll take one quick look before we do this next thing. And I'm glad you were with us today. I hope people are on the chat letting us know. Man, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Somebody can let me know if they are. Now, I want to see this. Let me see if I can find this real quick. If not, then, you know, it's all right. And so the, the light shining in darkness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The light shined into the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Darkness cannot hold down the light. And so we are going to send up a, today, a blanket. I saw it like this. When we start playing in a few minutes, we're going to raise a sound 
that's going to reinforce that whole thing that was blown apart. And we're going to lift this sound up to the sky, and it cannot come through that praise. Hallelujah. And so that's what we're going to do. Amen. So let's start raising this sound. Let's just start raising the sound now. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Just give me a, a sustain of some kind. Yeah.
heavens. We lift it up into that window that's going to try to be made. And we put it as a solid lock on that ceiling, a lock of praise. The praise steals the enemy and the avenger. Yeah, say it. Praise steals the enemy and the avenger. And the avenger Praise steals the enemy And the avenger We send up our blanket of praise We send up our blanket of praise We send up our blanket of praise Today send up our blanket with 
And that's the spirit that the enemy is planning on using. There were portals all up and down the hallway of that place. Pictures of portals, things of portals thrown up and down the place. Our team turned them over to the wall. And the government sent words from that city and they said, that's not your jurisdiction. Oh, but I, I differ with you. That is my jurisdiction. I command that spirit of hell, that skull of that gargoyle demon that sits there. I command that spirit of hell. You don't come through that eclipse. You're not welcome through that eclipse. In the name of Jesus, we are also the seed of the woman because we are his seed. He is the head and we are the body and we're crushing the head of the devil today. You'll not come through that open portal. Stay, stay. people in Carmen there, yell out, Jesus is Lord, come on, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord.
sound
frequencies in the air. Frequencies disrupting principalities and powers of the air. All the rockets that's fired into the darkness, trying to free them from prison and let them out. We call it null and void. And we give a shout. Come on. to hell then they will free it with the rockets into the eclipse and if that fails 
then CERN surely will come through. But we say nay. We say access denied. Access denied. Come on, all over the world, say access denied today. Today. 